The preview of VIP is out, and I'd like to go through it with you guys. There's only one real choice in it so far, and it just decides whether or not you get to see an extra story section, so that's the order we're going to read it in. Let's go through what we have available, and I'll give my thoughts on it afterward. If you've already read it yourself or listened to someone else read it, go ahead and skip ahead to the time on screen to get to the theorizing and speculation portion of this video. You, Devin, are the luckiest 12-year-old boy in the world because you just won two special VIP passes to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. An all-day, all-you-can-eat, all-expenses-paid experience for you and one of your best. You're bringing Ike, Mom says, looking at the colorful printout in your hand that shows Glamrock Freddy pointing at you with the words, You're a winner. I no, Mom! You wail. You can't think of anything less fun than spending the whole day with the mobile snot factory that is your six-year-old brother. Yes! Ike shouts. Did that sound like a question or a suggestion? Mom crosses her arms. Either you both go, or no one goes. There goes your dream of being the most popular kid in your class. At least while everyone competes to be the one to join you at the Pizzaplex. Fine, you sulk. You, Devin, are the unluckiest 12-year-old boy in the world because you just won two special VIP passes to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex for you and your little brother. You have to waste one of your precious VIP passes on your brother, but this is still going to be so much fun. You can just ignore the tag along like you usually do while you have the time of your life. Even though you live near the Pizzaplex, you hardly ever get to go. Your boring parents don't like the flashy lights and noise, and they say it's overpriced and the animatronics are disconcerting, which you think means they don't like the glam rock band's music. It's been ages since you were there last, at a classmate's birthday party, but it seems like the place gets bigger every year and they're always adding new rides. We then get a little intro into how interactive novels work, get two fast tokens if we want to play on easy, and nothing if we want to play on normal. As your mom drives up to the front of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, you press your face against the car window to see the giant sign over the entrance. It takes your breath away. Even in broad daylight, the neon letters and lightning bolts framing the image of the glam rock band are super bright. Lights and lasers flash invitingly just on the other side of the glass doors. You can't wait to get in there. You try to open the rear passenger door, but it's locked. Maybe I should go in with you, Mom says. That's okay, you say quickly. You wave the printout of the winner announcement you received in your email, wondering again how you won a contest you don't even remember entering. Dad called the Megaplex to be sure, and it isn't a scam, though the employee he spoke to didn't know anything about it either. Only two guests, remember? I can buy an admission pass. It's not like I'm about to go on any rides or eat Fazbear pizza. She shudders. And miss your spa day? I'll be fine, you say. I'll be fine, Ike parrots in a high voice from the booster seat next to you. You sigh, and Mom gives you a sharp look. You're in charge of your brother, Devin. Do not let him out of your sight. What could happen? You ask. They don't call the Mega Pizzaplex the safest place on Earth for nothing. Mom twists around to face you, one eyebrow raised. No one calls it that. But that old marketing campaign was a nice try. Their release form is mostly fine print, and it has so many legal disclaimers I considered calling my lawyer before signing it. But you did sign it, you say. You can trust the Pizzaplex, and you can trust me. Go enjoy your free Saturday, Mom. That convinces her. She smiles and the door unlocks. You pop open the door before she changes her mind and clamber out of the car. Be good. Take care of Ike, she calls as he scurries out after you. He's wearing an eye-watering orange shirt with say cheese on the front of it, which mom makes him wear in crowded places so he's easier to spot. At least she didn't suggest you bring his leash. Do you want the child harness? She asks. You roll your eyes. I do not. The last thing you want is to be physically tied to your shadow. That's what everyone calls Ike because he's always following you around, and he even looks exactly the way you did at his age, like your twins six years apart. Except no way were you ever so annoying and clingy. Ooh, Ike's mouth hangs open as he gapes at the sign above you. Chica! The chicken glam rock in pink spandex is his favorite. Move it, Spud. You nudge him roughly towards the doors. Passing through the glass doors into the pizza plex is like stepping into another world. The lobby is mainly illuminated by the candy-colored neon glow, and you have to blink to let your eyes adjust from sunlight to the dimly lit interior. 
Ike sticks his fingers in his ears. The cacophony of arcade games, loud rock music, and children shouting and laughing is almost overwhelming. You ate breakfast not long ago, but the mouth-watering aroma of fresh pizza, fried food, cotton candy, and popcorn sets your stomach rumbling. This place is unreal. It's fantastic. Entry gates are straight ahead, but you stop at the welcome desk first and slide the printout of your winner email across it to a pale man in a red shirt. The Pizzaplex employee squints at the page as though he doesn't know how to read. He holds the barcode under a scanner and frowns at his computer screen. Huh? What the heck? Your skin starts to itch as you worry that maybe this was a scam or a prank after all. You glance out the doors to the street outside, but your mother's car is gone. The employee looks skeptical. Uh, hold on a second, kids. He opens a drawer and rummages around for a while. He pulls out two plastic cards and hands them to you and Ike. Have fun! A line of other kids and their parents has formed behind you, so you step to the side to examine your card. It's a dull gray with a silver magnetic stripe on the back and the letters VIP printed on the front in black permanent marker. What's VIP? Ike asks. He pronounces the acronym as a word rhyming with zip. VIP, you say. Ike giggles. It stands for very important person, you explain. Are we very important? He asks. We're supposed to be. But this card doesn't make you feel important at all. It's so plain compared to the colorful, glossy entry passes with the Pizzaplex logo that the employee is handing out to other customers. It's also greasy, with dust, crumbs, and hair stuck to it. Disgusting. You consider swapping with Ike, but his card is covered with flecks of dried tomato sauce, so you just wipe yours against your jeans, planning to wash it off in the bathroom later. You expected the Pizzaplex to roll out the red carpet, but it seems you're on your own. Some kids are using their cards at terminals near the entrance. They must be information kiosks to help plan a visit. And this is where we make our only choice in the sample, and we're gonna go to the gate. So you stride toward the entry gates with Ike on your heels, hoping the stupid VIP pass works. Here goes, you think. You press the card to a reader and the display flashes green. The gate swings open away from you. Yes, you say, but before you can step through, it slams shut again. No. The display flickers and turns from green to red, with glowing white text. See VIP. I am the VIP, you shout. You snatch Ike's pass and try it. Same thing. Your brother presses against your side. He's trembling. Can we go now? He asks in a timid voice. What's wrong with you? You say harshly. He's terrified by something on the other side of the gates. No, it's someone. Glamrock Chica is standing nearby, mobbed by joyful kids. The six-foot-plus white chicken's head swivels in your direction, and her purple eyes look directly into yours. You can't help but shiver. You clear your throat. I thought she was your favorite. She's too big, Ike squeaks. Haven't you seen an animatronic before? Then you realize he hasn't. This is his first time visiting the Mega Pizzaplex. No wonder he was so excited to come with you. They're harmless. The worst thing she'll make you do is exercise and eat junk food. Glamrock Chica suddenly sprints toward the entrance, closing the distance fast. Ike screams and covers his eyes. When she reaches your gate, she stops and says cheerfully, Are you lost? You've seen the Glamrock animatronics before in person, but only on the stage and in their green rooms behind a glass window. Okay, up close, Glamrock Chica is maybe a little scary. As scary as someone can be in a pink leotard and leg warmers. But since Ike is afraid, you certainly aren't going to show any nervousness. Hey, Glamrock Chica. Should you call her Miss Chica? Idiot, she's just a fancy robot. It's not like she has any feelings or intelligence. You hold up your VIP pass. This thing doesn't work. She stares at it curiously. Oh, you must be Devin. She leans over the entry gate and looks down at Ike. And you're Ike. Ike peeks out from between his fingers. You know who I am? Glamrock Chica straightens. Of course. We're so happy you've come to have fun with us at the Mega Pizzaplex today. VIP is expecting you. Just insert your pass in a terminal over there. She points to the wall behind the welcome desk. Ike puts his hands on top of the gate and looks up at Chica adoringly. I like your bow, he says. Chica runs a hand over the three feathers on her head. Thanks, kid. Hey, here's a hint that might help you later. If you get lost, just keep going left. She winks. Okay. You shrug and head toward a terminal. Bye, Chica, Ike shouts. See you later. Have fun, she says as she stomps off. 
By the time you reach the terminals behind the welcome desk, all but one are already being used by customers. You insert your VIP pass into the slot below its screen, and it's slurped into the wall. The bouncing Pizzaplex logo disappears and is replaced with a blue screen. Terrific, you say. The machine is broken. You pound a fist against the kiosk. Give me back my card. Pixel art pizzas with white wings start flying across the screen. Then static crackles across the image. It's glitched, Ike says. You think? You snap. The static clears to reveal the face of a pink cartoon pig with large round glasses that make his eyes look big. He wears an oversized black suit jacket with a loose red tie. Behind his head, a purple synthwave grid moves against the black background. Hi, pig, Ike says. You're super cute. You gently smack the back of Ike's head. He can't hear you, silly. It's just a recording. The pig grins. Good morning, Devin and Ike. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. He sounds like a young kid with a stuffy nose. Uh, a customized recording? You say. How do you know our names? I know a lot, he says. I am very informative pig. My friends call me VIP. Will you be my friends? I'll be your friend, VIP, Ike chirps. Thank you. Stick with me and we will have oodles of fun together. Ike's right about one thing. VIP is cute. He reminds you of those animated ads for the Pizzaplex with cartoon renditions of the Glamrock animal mascots. But you've never seen or heard of him before. Are you a new feature? You ask. Actually, I have been at the Pizzaplex for a while. However, it has been a very, very long time since I was last activated. VIP's smile turns upside down and a large blue tear appears below his right eye. Then he's back to his bright and cheerful self. Ike's hopping up and down in front of the terminal. You ignore him and ask VIP. What do you do? A graduation cap pops onto VIP's head. I think and I know things. I am a digital companion for Pizzaplex guests. I can answer questions and make suggestions to enhance your visit. I have a question, Ike says, shifting from one foot to the other. VIP looks at Ike. It looks like you need a restroom. Would you like directions? Ike goes still. I do need to go potty, he says in a hushed voice. Hold it in, you say. I have more important questions. How'd I win this special pass? I never entered any contest. I am programmed to anticipate what people want. I selected your name from a log of guests in a five mile radius who have not returned in six or more months and are not missing or deceased, VIP says. You invited us? You ask. Precisely, VIP says. That's why the staff wasn't expecting us today, you say. Something falls out of the slot below the screen with a hard thump. You pull it out. It's a large cookie in the shape of VIP's head. What's this? You ask. A smart cookie for a smart cookie, VIP says. And none of that was foreboding at all. So let's go ahead and get it out of the way. Yes, VIP probably is the Mimic 1 program. I know, I know, everyone's the Mimic these days, but don't worry. I have a bit of solace for you if you hate the Mimic. The answers are rarely ever so simple. This is FNAF we're talking about, and who done it hasn't been the most compelling aspect of the lore since, like, 2015. Besides, this clearly isn't the physical Mimic Endo, and we don't yet know whether we need to account for the storyteller maybe being in the Pizzaplex during this encounter. This is completely uncharted territory, being both a book and a game, so who knows what continuities it may or may not fit with. We still can't even agree on whether the books and the games are the same timeline or not, so sorting this one out probably won't be so simple either. In this interactive novel, unlike many of the games, we at least get the privilege of knowing with certainty who we play as. And that's going to be Devin, who, at the very responsible age of 12 years old, was put in charge of his six-year-old brother, Ike, in a massive, crowded venue by themselves for some reason. It's made clear that despite Ike's idolizing Devin, Devin doesn't want to be hanging out with Ike. This is a fairly normal dynamic with younger siblings, but in this story, I can see it coming with some real consequences. Given what VIP says about anticipating people's desires, I worry what might become of Ike if VIP works out that Devin doesn't want him there. This is probably going to be one of the hurdles we face in the book. It could also err on the side of potential gaslighting, I guess? Basically, VIP saying, you don't know what you want, I know what you want. 
and you want X. Whether this would be about getting rid of Ike or something else is unclear. VIP states that he's been at the Pizzaplex for a while and that he hasn't been activated for a long time. He shows that he feels sad about that, which is notable considering he's a computer program and they typically can't feel. When asked about himself, he sells himself as an intelligent digital companion. Kind of like Helpy. He also shows that he can see and hear Devin and Ike through a terminal that he probably shouldn't be able to do so from. Devin goes from, he can't hear you, to conversing with VIP with no questions asked though, so who knows. I will say these terminals almost certainly aren't designed to produce cookies, especially cookies modeled after characters that the staff doesn't even know are active. Even if they were meant to distribute the cookies, who stocked them with VIP cookies? VIP also apparently has full access to guest profiles, logs of who visits, the ability to analyze data, and can contact the outside world, at least through email. He's also able to do all of these things completely independently, as shown by none of the staff being aware of any of it. He can access everything, change anything, do anything, and he flies totally under the radar? That's a recipe for a tough adversary, if I've ever seen one. There's also potential that he's controlling, or at least sharing, information with the animatronics. Chica knew Devin and Ike's names right off the bat, and knew what the VIP cards were. She wasn't at all confused by them, and she directed Devin and Ike straight to VIP, and she sounded familiar with him. She also gave us some advice about going left if we get lost. This could just be a callback to Mazer size and the popular maze strategy of hugging the left wall, or it could be real advice if some part of her internal programming knows these kids might be in danger, but she can't do anything about it. It's probably just about Mazer size, though. Also, I think we should talk about how weird it is that VIP and Chica know Ike's name. It's kind of expected that they'd know Devin. Devin's been there before, has a guest profile, plus he was the one that VIP directly invited. Ike, however, shouldn't have a guest profile yet. He's never been there before. I suppose it's possible that Devin made one for his brother or that their mom set it up, but I doubt it. I think the release she talks about having signed coincides with the birthday party Devin attended at the Pizzaplex. If not, then she shouldn't have been caught off guard by the number of disclaimers because she would have seen it before when Devin went to the birthday party. Provided we don't see any vanny masks or neural implant shenanigans, VIP will likely only be able to reach our protagonist via the tech in the Pizzaplex. Unfortunately, the animatronics are Pizzaplex tech, and they're very mobile. I could see Ike being especially vulnerable to being tricked by Chica, but it could go the other way around. Twice now, in Security Breach, we've seen Pizzaplex animatronics turn against the Mimic in favor of kids who seem to idolize them. Perhaps Ike will find some way to save Chica from VIP's influence. Whatever happens to Devin and Ike, it's clear that they're far from the first targets. The Pizzaplex has already had to run an ad campaign about how safe the place is to, presumably, counteract bad press from missing or injured kids. This is made clear in the conversation had in the car with the exposition, I mean with their mom. Also, can I just mention how wild it sounds for a parent to trust a 12-year-old to watch a six-year-old in a place like the Pizzaplex? At home would be one thing, but I know plenty of parents that are reluctant to let their kids in massive, crowded places like that, even when they're with them. Not to mention, what exactly did their dad talk to the employee on the phone about? How did he learn that the email wasn't a trick if the employee didn't know about it either? Also, those passes are sketchy. Black Sharpie on a plain gray plastic card? And they're buried in a drawer and nasty? Where did these come from if no employees know about the contest VIP ran? Who set these up? Someone in the Pizzaplex could be working in tandem with VIP, that's for sure. It could be Vanny or some equivalent. Or maybe the program ran a different con to trick an employee into setting up the cards? I just hope we actually get some answers to these questions when the book drops on August 3rd. And maybe to more than that. I hope you guys join me for the anniversary week. I'll probably stream myself going through the interactive novel, and I fully intend to stream into the pit when it comes out. If Jeff ever finishes making all those pizzas, I'll at least make a video about going through the site, but I might stream that. With that said, I want to say thank you to my channel members, Ballsfrog and Embrisk. I'll see you guys in the next one, and, and have, have a, a terrific day!